what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today's down and dirty is how to load concrete into a truck it's a little daunting your first time because you got these huge slabs of concrete and you've got a truck that you don't want to break or damage or you don't want to upset the driver and oh my gosh how do we do this well today i'm going to show you so the first thing we're going to do i'm going to try to load up with some reasonably small stuff here it's been a little bit of a chaotic morning so I haven't really gotten myself prepped very well for my truck with all the stuff that's been going on so we're just gonna kind of get a bucket of the smaller stuff focus on getting our truck in the right position and then we'll go to town loading so we're gonna have him come on back to us and I'm gonna get him pretty dang close because this is a long trailer all right so your first one, obviously we don't want to drop this from way up high. So we're going to get down in the box. We're going to reach as far out as we can. And there we go. There's our first round. Your first round, your first couple buckets, uh, you don't want to drop it from up high because you're hitting directly on uh, the liner in there, or, or not even the liner, but the actual box. And you don't want to damage the truck. So, you know, we're going to do it in a relatively delicate, dainty way. Your truck driver will appreciate you for it. Your foreman will appreciate you for it. Everyone, everyone will appreciate you for being dainty and delicate. So same thing here, because this is one of our first buckets. We're gonna reach way out there. We're gonna get nice and low. There it is. And you have to remember, at the end of the day, we're loading concrete into a giant steel box. So it is gonna be loud. There's gonna be a lot of banging around. That doesn't mean you're damaging things. Just don't drop it from way up high. Another important thing to note, concrete can only go into steel boxes. If you were to try to load uh, concrete into an aluminum box truck, you would probably get your ass chewed by the truck driver and various other people because Concrete will destroy an aluminum box. You also want to make sure your truck doesn't have any sort of a plastic liner in it. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of times drivers will put a liner inside the box to help dirt um, to not stick to the bottom of the box. Well, if they got a plastic liner, you're going to absolutely destroy that thing. So it's important to know, it's important to confirm with your truck driver that he is able to carry concrete before you just go piling him high. Outside of that, it's really just a matter of loading them like you would with dirt. It's just you're dealing with giant slabs instead of dirt clumps. Um, we're gonna start as far forward as we can, just like we did in our dirt video when we did a loading on-road trucks with dirt. We're gonna start towards the front and work our way to the back. It's just we've got to be a little more aware of where we're putting stuff and how we're swinging and you know what's riding on the side of our bucket because you don't want a big old chunk of concrete falling off and hitting the side of the truck or damaging uh, the existing concrete out here. Because you have to remember, everything over here to the left, what the truck is sitting on, is uh, that's remaining. We're not cutting that out. And so if we get a huge slab of concrete that falls out of my bucket here, and chips that concrete, well now we're responsible for the tear out and replacement of that concrete. The other thing that could happen is you could have a chunk fall out and hit the side of the truck and damage the side of the truck. We don't want either of those. And so we're just gonna make sure we've got everything in our bucket before we go to swing anywhere. And I'm sure at some point here, you're gonna see how all of this rebar is gonna hold these chunks together. And so, you'll see what I mean when I say we need to make sure everything is kind of in our bucket or at least attached. And this piece right here, I think, is the example. So we're going to try to get the big chunk in our bucket. The other pieces will hang off. Okay. We've got a hanger. See how this is kind of hanging off to the left and if I were to swing too hard that's that's eh, that's a little dicey so I'm gonna try to reposition a little bit because that's what you don't want to come off and damage something 
now I've got total control over this load. The, the pieces of re-rod that are holding there are strong enough that I'm not worried about them going anywhere. So we're gonna send this piece. Yeah, I set that down pretty hard because it looked like it was about. Sometimes you gotta do that. That's one of the things that happens when you're loading concrete. Again, steel box. I'm not damaging anything. It's making a lot of noise. That, uh, that big slab dropped a little higher than I would have liked to have, but we didn't break anything. And that's the key when you're pulling concrete. Don't break stuff. When you run across a big chunk like this out here that I'm gonna have to break up, instead of just hammering on it with your excavator and damaging the excavator, you can see I've already got stress fractures all through this thing. So what I'm gonna try to do is drop it on some other pieces and just kind of finish those off. I might be able to drop it there. So I'm gonna try to push some of these pieces out underneath it to give it something hard to hit against. Of course, nothing's gonna participate with me because we're making it down and dirty. That's how these things normally go. There we go. Get up there. Boy, that piece just does not want to participate for me, does it? Oh, I almost had it right there. There it is. If you generally, when they're like this, if you can pick them up and drop them a couple of times. Uh, they'll start to come apart on you and you can already see this thing is really starting to lose its strength uh, You want to be careful working in tight to the machine and I'm gonna talk about this in another video I do on specifically pulling concrete, but working tight against the machine is where you could really get yourself into some trouble um, Just because re-rod will fly up occasionally or you'll you'll uh, curl your bucket just a little too hard and all of a sudden that thing ends up almost coming in the cab with you. You just always want to be very aware of what your machine's doing and what the material is going to do as you start to move it around. And you can see this piece, we're starting to get re-rod breaking, so I'm getting chunks off of it. It's, it's quickly becoming a manageable piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this small stuff and we're just gonna kinda pad the bottom of our box to protect it so that when we drop in this big mama in a minute, it's not hitting directly on the bottom of the box. And I'm in a little 145, guys. Uh, obviously, the bigger the machine you have, the easier it is to pull. There we go, that's what I'm needing. That's what I'm needing. Um, but with this, this kind of small machine, you've got the bucket size that's just not where it, quite where it needs to be to really grab this stuff and hold on to it well. Um, because it's such big slabs. If we were in a 345 or a 349, something along those lines, uh, obviously you could fit a lot more in your bucket. You've got the width that you can grab some of these and be confident you're not gonna drop them on the truck. That guy roll off the side, we should be good. Anytime we're gonna stretch and we've got that thing kind of at an angle, we're gonna go nice and slow because it's gonna be any jerky movements that are gonna make that thing start to slide off. So we're just gonna lower them right down in here, nice and gentle. I feel the bottom of the truck, so we're just gonna kind of slowly release it. There you go. That's how you're gonna do a big slab right there. Now I'm hoping you guys can see that. It has occurred to me. I'll have to look at my screen on the next one. So again, working in tight, you want to go nice and gentle. So we're going to reach out on this one because it's a lighter load. We're going to get that as far as we can, shove her out there. 
Yeah, you guys can see what I'm doing up there. All right. Wouldn't that have been great if I was doing a video on how to load a truck with concrete and you couldn't even see the truck? Brilliant, Brian. Brilliant. I'm curling nice and slow here tight because you can see this re-rod right up against the machine. Or you can't see that. Maybe you can't see that. But this re-rod is right up against this machine. And so if I really start going crazy, uh, very quickly something could pop up and slap me in the cab here. So we're just gonna be nice and easy working up tight to the machine. Come on, fall the way I want you to. There we go, now we can drag her out. There we go. And just a little manipulation of the material uh, doesn't require cranking on the machine. You, you can you can start doing things like breaking rebar and and breaking chunks of concrete without destroying your machine. Too many people think that concrete pulling is just this 100% brute force, be as brutal on the machine as possible job, and it's really not. All I'm going to do here is try to push some of this concrete forward in the box. No, it's not going to work. All right. Um, so yeah, this is it guys. I mean, I would love to chat with you more and tell you that there's much more to this, but this is all we're doing is we're going to continue to uh, load that box from front to back. Now that I've pretty much got the bottom of the box um, covered with concrete, I don't have to worry quite so much about getting as low. <clears throat> we're still going to get low for the comfort of my driver, but I'm going to be far more aggressive on dumping. Um, as you can see, that's, I'm not super worried about going slow on the release because now I'm not coming into contact with the bottom of the box. I'm just hitting uh, directly on that concrete and it's protecting the box. But that's it. That's what there is. This is loading concrete into a truck and it's just going to continue until we've got her just below the rim of the truck. Um, most of the time, uh, concrete, you're going to be able to load right up to uh, the, the top rim of the truck just because concrete doesn't sit as dense in the truck as dirt does and so you can generally fit a little more volume in the truck because it's not quite as dense and your weight isn't as high um, so that being said that's all we got for today I'm gonna continue to load this guy out we'll send him on to the crusher thanks for watching as always comment down below if you got questions we'll catch you on the next down and dirty